Lambkin, 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 Syracuse has a new starting center. Let's roll. You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and as you can tell, I am fired up, and you should be too, because Syracuse has a new starting center from Colorado. He's six foot eleven. He's three hundred pounds. He's real, and he's spectacular. It's Eddie Lampkin coming over from Colorado to the Cuse. Let's go, baby! Woo! Syracuse has a new center, and that's what today's show is going to be about, plus the aggregate. It's about replacing the guys that we lost by getting four impactful players on average who's better than everyone that they're losing, and what is Naheem McLeod's role now that Lampkin is a member of the Cuse? Let's roll, baby. Thank you so much for listening to Locked On Syracuse here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right. So Eddie Lampkin, it was was kind of under the radar. Nobody really had any sort of connection to Syracuse prior to Monday night. When Eddie Lampkin tweets out that, something about his decision, like where's home. And then you see a lot of Syracuse players starting to like it on social media. And where there's smoke, there's fire. Because Syracuse had not publicly announced that they were going after Eddie Lampkin. Until on Tuesday morning, when Syracuse.com's Brent Axe reported that Eddie Lampkin was visiting Syracuse. And that he was coming to campus and everything like that. And lo and behold, it seems like the Orange pulled out the all the stops. And the number one trick, which is once you have him in the building, you don't let him leave without, si- without signing on the dotted line. Eddie Lampkin from Colorado is officially a member of Syracuse. Last season at Colorado, he averaged... 10 points in seven rebounds a game in about 28 minutes. He's going to be a fifth-year senior. So he's got one year of eligibility. So that means one year with the Orange. Listen, is he the greatest player in the world? No. Is he an all-conference center? I would say no. But he is a starting caliber center that is proven in March. 24-7 Sports has him listed as a four-star transfer just outside of the top 100 overall. I believe he was 103. On three, hasn't quite updated their list yet as to where he ranks. But still, he's a solid, solid get for Syracuse. In the tournament, he did have a big one. Colorado played three games. They played in the first four. Then they played Florida. Then they played Marquette. He averaged 16 points and six rebounds, including 21 points against the Florida Gators in that wild one. What Lampkin brings is a very solid post game. He's very nimble on his feet, and he likes that spin move. He gets a lot of players, a lot of centers on that spin move. Not only that, he's someone who can put the ball on the floor. For someone that's 6'11", 300 pounds, He can surprisingly move and really dribble the ball well, which is not common for guys that are his size. The way I would think of him is honestly like DJ Burns. He's honestly kind of like him. And if you don't know who DJ Burns is, if you don't know who DJ Burns is, he's the big guy at NC State. He's the big one. That's basically Eddie Lampkin. There was a, 
you know, he, he's just also a great passer. Last year at, at Colorado, he had a 14% assist rate as a center. He averaged over two assists a game. And he's a great offensive rebounder as well. Nearly three offensive rebounds per game. So with Syracuse, you're getting a center who can score a little bit, who can pass, who helps the rebounding problem. Remember, last five years for the Orange, they have been a really bad rebounding team. They have not been a positive in the rebounding margin in quite some time. And Eddie Lampkin is going to be the starting center next year, probably playing about 25 to 30 minutes. And he's going to help solve that main weakness for Syracuse. There are a couple weaknesses with Lampkin. He's not a perfect player by any means. As someone who's a great passer, that also comes with turnovers sometimes. And in the Pac-12 last season, he was, I have it here, he was fifth worst in the Pac-12 in turnovers per game. So while he's going to have a high assist rate, he can turn the ball over a little bit, which is a little bit frustrating, but we can live with that. And he's also not someone who's really going to space the floor for you. In his four years at college, he has never attempted a three-pointer. Never. So there's not even a small sample to go on there. He's never attempted a three. He is your prototypical big man, though, that can't really shoot. And that's okay. Because Syracuse didn't need to get the greatest center in the world. What they needed was a starting caliber center. And Eddie Lampkin is exactly that. Last year, 10 points, 7 rebounds. And I think if next year, for the Cuse, if he scores 10 and 7, we'd be happy with that. We'd be so happy to have a center. He doesn't have to be Jesse Edwards. He doesn't have to be Rakeem Christmas. Just be average to above average. A man. This one feels good. Syracuse really needed a win in the transfer portal. They got one. Eddie Lampkin, officially a member of the Q's. As I said before, 6'11", 300 pounds, he's real, and he's spectacular. Now, it's time to talk about the aggregate. Where does he fit in that? And can Syracuse find three more players whose average impact is greater than the players that they have lost? Amazon Fire TV is the place I get the top streaming apps and channels for movies like TV and for watching Syracuse games and also the Final Four, which is coming up soon. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash TV. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN or TV all day? Had to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the streaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every day, 
Folks, Eddie Lampkin from Colorado, 6'11", 300 pounds. He's a center, is coming to the Cuse next season. Wow, what a transfer this is. A borderline top 100 overall transfer. Four stars. Syracuse badly needed a starting center. They didn't publicly reach out to him. It was only reported on Tuesday morning by Syracuse.com's Brent Axe, who does great work, that he was visiting Syracuse. Unbelievable. It seems like in the past 24 hours, we went from how is Syracuse not contacting any center to we have one. Eddie Lampkin. He's not the greatest, but we'll take it. Starting caliber center. Book it. 16 and 6 in the tournament. But now it's time to talk about the aggregate. And I touched on this in the Malik Brown podcast when I was kind of angry and upset and depressed that at the end of the day, you have to bring in players whose impact is greater than the ones you're leaving. This is simply Moneyball. In the movie Moneyball, they talked about losing Johnny Damon and Jason Isrenhausen and Jason Giambi. They talked about losing those three guys and they had to bring in three players whose average impact, in this case, in, in that case, it was on base percentage, was equal to the three that they lost. It's the same concept with Syracuse right now. The Orange have five of their own players that have entered the transfer portal. They are Malik Brown, Quadier Copeland, Benny Williams, Justin Taylor, and Peter Carey. Those five players. Now Eddie Lampkin has committed to Syracuse, which means the Orange now have three players who's eligible now for a roster spot, a.k.a. a scholarship. Because in the NCAA, you're allowed 13 scholarships. And with Eddie Lampkin now at Syracuse, Syracuse has 10 of those spots filled up. Having said that, SU needs to bring in four players who average impact is greater than the ones that they have lost. And Lampkin is a solid start because I don't think he's a better player than Malik Brown. I don't. But that's okay. He doesn't have to be a better player than Malik Brown. I'm trying to tell you this is it's, it's not the end of the world because out of those five, I would say that Lampkin's impact is probably either two or three. You can argue him or Quidier Copeland, but he's for sure better than Benny Williams. He's definitely better than Justin Taylor, and he's definitely better than Peter Carey, too. And those are three players that they have lost. So you're off to a good start. You've already got someone who is at least better than three players that they have lost. You've already got that. Now, who are some other guys that Syracuse is after in this aggregate? These are just what we know publicly. Remember with Eddie Lampkin, it was, we didn't know until, you know, the last 24 hours or so. Malik Mack, Mikhail Brown Jones, Darlin Stone Dubar, Farrell Payne, Dakota Lefew, and Jaquan Carlos. All of those guys right now, Syracuse is publicly after. I would say of those guys that I mentioned, three of them would be the best player. How should I say this? They would be better than any player that Syracuse has lost. So those are Malik Mack, Mikhail Brown-Jones, and Darlin Stone Dubar. All three of those guys would be better than the guys that they are losing. The other ones, I don't think are. But as I said, does it really matter? You don't need four players that are as good, if not better, than Malik Brown to be a better team. And I think if SU were to get three of those players that I mentioned that are, they have been publicly after, now with Lampkin also in the fold, they're going to have a better team next year. They're setting themselves up to have 
a more talented and deeper roster next season. I'm very, very optimistic right now about this team. It's a solid start to the transfer portal class. I don't think Eddie Lampkin is going to be the crown jewel, but it solves a need at the center position, and it's a big start in the aggregate. That's one player. Can you get three more similar to him? And this team is going to be a whole lot better next season. Perhaps make the NCAA tournament, which is a requirement for this team next season. They have to be in there next year. But I think that kind of sums up the aggregate for you guys. I think that kind of sums it up. Just get players whose average impact is greater than the ones you're losing. And Eddie Lampkin is a solid start to that. So now, Syracuse has a starting center. What happens to the previous starting center? No, no, not Malik Brown. I'm talking about the one before him. He's coming off an injury. That's Naheem McLeod. What's his role for next season? How does he project? The sports calendar is loaded, and FanDuel's making it even more exciting to get in on the action. Because right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 you can use to bet on the tourney, MLB, which has just started, NBA, NHL, and so much more. And hey, we're down to the final four. UConn is taking on Alabama. Do you want to bet on an upset there? UConn, who just went on a 30-0 run. But hey, it's Alabama, and they're a high-octane offense. Also, Purdue facing the surprise of the tournament, NC State. Can NC State keep it up? Can they really take it? Is this really 1983 here? Well, with this deal, you can certainly cash in. And I know I will. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a big win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Welcome back, everyone, in the Locked On Syracuse podcast. I'm Jackson Holzer. Thank you for making us your first listen of every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And hey, I'm here for you to break down all this breaking news in the transfer portal. Eddie Lampkin, the center from Colorado, who averaged 10 points and 7 rebounds last season. A very solid get. He's coming to the Qs, baby. He's coming to the Qs. Finally, it's been a little bit. Been two years since Syracuse has had a legitimate starting center. But the guy who we thought was going to be an ace, so to speak, at the center position was Naheem McLeod. And he is still on the roster. So is William Patterson, by the way. He's still there, too. He redshirted. What is Naheem McLeod's role now that Eddie Lampkin is here? I say Naheem McLeod is now the backup center. He's the backup. And in case you're wondering, is McLeod going to transfer because now he's the backup? Doesn't seem like it on Twitter. I think McLeod is pretty happy that Lampkin is coming. And this is a really good thing for Syracuse that McLeod appears that he's not taking it as a shot. He's going to stay and be the backup center. Because here's the thing with McLeod. He is best in a reserve role. That's where he's the best. That's where he excelled at Florida State, aside from that Syracuse game where he went off in 2023. Yeah, it was in 2023 where he went off. But he's best as a backup. Last season, before he got hurt, Naheem McLeod, he played 14 games, and he started all of them. Yes, it wasn't Malik Brown who was the starting center. It was actually Naheem McLeod. But before that, before that, Naheem McLeod had started less than 50% of his collegiate games in the Division I level. 
He was not a regular starting center for his two years at Florida State before coming to Syracuse. And at Florida State, he played about 10 to 13 minutes a night. That's what he was. But when Syracuse got him, he was billed as the replacement to Jesse Edwards. That's what he was sold to us as. But in reality, he was Naheem McLeod. McLeod is really good in a pinch. He's really good in a pinch. As a backup, he is a force on the defensive end because he only played about 15 minutes a game last year, which, by the way, was a career high for him. But he averaged about two blocks a game as a playing 15 minutes. He averaged two blocks a game. And I would say McLeod is a better defender than Lampkin. So in situations where the Orange are, say, up by two with 20 seconds to go, McLeod is someone who I would rather have on the floor than Lampkin. McLeod still has a role on this team. But instead of us counting on him to be more than what he is, he can now just be Naheem McLeod. The math adds up. Eddie Lampkin plays about 27 to 30 minutes a night. That's what he did last year at Colorado. Naheem McLeod is best playing 10 to 15 minutes. And not starting. So, Naheem McLeod, now he is the backup center that is best for him because that's what he was doing at Florida State. He was mostly the backup center. McLeod is still a force on the defensive side of the ball. He's a better defender than Eddie Lampkin. Eddie Lampkin does not block a lot of shots for someone who's 6'11". He doesn't. He doesn't average even a block a game. So McLeod certainly as a shot blocker. He can also rebound as well. He's seven foot four. We know what he is at this point, and we know what he isn't. McLeod isn't a starting center. You can't count on him to give you 10 and 7, like Lampkin. But what you can count on is him providing 10 to 15 solid minutes a night playing good defense, getting rebounding, and blocking shots at the rim, being that intimidating presence. And I could easily see, if Syracuse wants to go big, they could have possibly out there Donnie Freeman at the three, Eddie Lampkin at the four, and Naheem McLeod at the five. Now, they would only do that probably in spurts, but that is, in theory, something that they could try out, and I would like to see it especially in the beginning of the season, just to see, does it actually kind of work if they can do that? But regardless, the main takeaway from Naheem McLeod, now that Eddie Lampkin is in the fold and coming to Syracuse, McLeod is the backup center who can play defense, who can rebound, who can block shots, and most importantly, he can just be Naheem McLeod. Doesn't have to worry about being anyone's replacement. He just has to be himself. And I'm so happy that, according to his Twitter, it doesn't look like he's going anywhere. Doesn't look like he's leaving. Seems like he's going to accept the role of being more in the reserve. He's going to be more of a reserve. He's going to accept that. He still definitely has a role. And just to briefly touch on William Patterson... I can easily see him kind of being like Peter Carey. If there's an injury, William Patterson becomes the number two center. Which, thank goodness, by the way, because Peter Carey was kind of the only center on the roster when Naheem McLeod went down. But now they have three. Now they have three. William Patterson becomes the number two. If someone were to get hurt, he can still develop. You hope that he doesn't transfer. You hope that he can stay developing at Syracuse. And one day, maybe when, you know, Naheem McLeod is gone and Eddie Lampkin's gone after this season, he can be the starting center for the 2025-26 season. But we are still a ways away from that 
And there are still so much basketball ahead of us. So that's how I kind of see William Patterson in all this. He's the third string center. Maybe he'll see a few minutes here or there. Lampkin now the starter. Naheem McLeod, the backup. He can just be the backup. And William Patterson, third string. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this video, click that like button. Also, you can leave a five-star review. If you really like this, subscribe to the channel. Turn on those notifications so you know right when I'm dropping the next podcast. Because who knows? Breaking news. It's breaking. It can happen in any moment. Eddie Lampkin, the new starting center for Syracuse. Take care, everyone.